Coming now to equity analysis, here we'll have a very high level discussion because there is a full topic on equity and this material will be covered in detail over there. The high level steps for equity valuation, you need to understand the business and the existing financial profile of the business, forecast the company performance, select a appropriate valuation model and when you do equity analysis, you will notice that we can have models based on ratios, models based on discounted cash flows, models based on value of assets and liabilities. We then convert the forecasts into a valuation and make an investment decision. In this particular reading, we are focused on ratios, and there is substantial evidence that ratios are useful in forecasting earnings and stock returns. Some of the important valuation ratios for equity are price to earnings. This is the price per share divided by the earnings per share, price per cash flow, price per sales, and price per book value. The book value of a company is also called the net asset value or the value of assets minus the value of liabilities. We've already talked about some of these ratios before, basic EPS and diluted EPS. We did this in the reading on the income statement. Cash flow per share tells us the total cash flow from operations divided by the weighted average number of shares. EBITDA, EBITDA is sometimes used as a quick proxy for cash flow. EBITDA per share is simply EBITDA divided by the weighted average number of shares. Dividends per share, this is the common declared dividends divided by the average number of ordinary shares outstanding. Industry specific ratios, some high level remarks over here. As has been mentioned before, there is no universally accepted definition or classification of ratios. Ratios simply serve as indicators of performance and value. Now, there are aspects of performance which are relevant in one industry, but which might be completely irrelevant in another. Hence, you will often notice the use of industry-specific ratios. From an exam perspective, I don't think you need to memorize the industry-specific ratios. But if you look at Exhibit 19 in the curriculum, it gives you a sense for the types of ratios that are used in different industries. And as a quick example, in the retail industry, an important ratio is the same store sales change. Because if you are a retail analyst and you are evaluating a particular retail company, you want to know how the sales are changing in a particular store. Because when revenue is going up, very broadly speaking, revenue could be going up because more stores are being built or revenue could be going up because the sales from a given store or the sales on a per store basis are going up. Clearly, you would get much more excited if the sales on a per store basis are going up. In the banking sector, a very important ratio is the CAR or capital adequacy ratio. This gives you a sense for how much capital a company in this case, a bank has relative to the risk that it is taking. I don't think you need to know the details of this ratio, but again, the high level point here is that in every industry, there will be some specific ratios that are extremely relevant for that industry. Credit analysis is the evaluation of credit risk. The idea here is that you are considering lending money to an entity. So you might be thinking of buying a bond or you might be a bank and you are thinking of lending money to this company. And then obviously when you lend money to an entity, the entity needs to make some promised payments. So the entity would promise to make interest payments and a principal payment or there might be multiple principal payments. There is a risk that the entity might not make the interest payments and or the principal payments on time. There is a risk that these payments will not be made in full. The risk of the entity not meeting its obligations to repay you is called credit risk. And to evaluate credit risk, 
ratios are used extensively. Obviously, there is a lot more to credit risk, but our focus here is on ratios. And some of the ratios used to evaluate credit risk are shown over here. We have EBITDA interest coverage. So this is EBITDA divided by gross interest. The idea is that if an entity has a relatively high EBITDA and a relatively low gross interest, then that is good because low gross interest implies a relatively low level of debt. A high EBITDA means high cash flow. So a company with a relatively high cash flow is going to be good at repaying. So high is good. Then we have funds which are generated from operations divided by debt. So FFO divided by debt. Here again, high is good because we want relatively high funds generated from operations divided by a low level of debt. So again, high is good. Then we have free operating cash flow to debt. This is CFO minus capital expenditures divided by debt. Again, high is good. EBIT margin. So this essentially is how much EBIT earnings before interest and taxes are being generated relative to total revenue. In general, high margin numbers are good. So the next ratio also is a margin ratio, but this is EBITDA margin. So in both these cases, high is good. Debt to EBITDA. This is the only ratio shown over here where low is good because here we want a low level of debt relative to EBITDA. So here low is good. And then return on capital. This is EBIT divided by average capital. And here high is good. So as a simple way of remembering whether high is good or low is good, if the numerator has some form of cash flow, then generally high is going to be good because you want the company generating high cash relative to the level of debt or you would want a company to have a high profit margin. But if we have debt in the numerator, then low is good because you would want a relatively low level of debt compared to a cash flow. Business and geographic segments Often, as an analyst, we need to evaluate the performance of underlying business segments. If we take a business like General Electric, this operates in several different segments. And you want to evaluate how each segment is performing. Let's say that a company has three different segments and you evaluate that A is doing extremely well, B is average and C is underperforming then a company announcement that it's going to discontinue or spin off C is going to be taken as positive news. If you look at the various ratios, these are simply ratios that you have studied before, but they are expressed on a per segment basis. Even though companies are not required to publish financial reports on a segment basis, but both IFRS and US CAP require disclosures related to each business segment. And there are details in the curriculum about exactly what needs to be disclosed. Finally, section eight, model building and forecasting. I have captured the essence of what is explained in this picture. In order to come up with a model which predicts future cash flows, we need to forecast the most important item to forecast for a given company is the sales numbers. Then we can look at expected ratios such as the gross profit margin. If you have a prediction for the gross profit margin or you have an expected gross profit margin based on your evaluation of the company, then you can use the forecasted sales and your prediction of the gross profit margin to come up with your estimate of cost of goods sold. And then you can come up with the gross profit. Similarly, based on other ratios, you can predict other items on the income statement and eventually you can predict the net income. So using this method, you can come up with forecasts for net income. You can use the same concept to come up with forecasts for cash flows. And then 
once you have these forecasts you can then try to come up with a valuation for the company that you are evaluating that brings us to the end of this reading a quick summary it is extremely important that you learn all the ratios and here are the various categories that we have talked about in general you can use these techniques to remember the ratio i have discussed these before so i won't say them again the job for you is to make sure that you can remember the ratios and then you need to as i keep saying practice lots of problems so that you become comfortable using the ratios read the summary this is not as useful as some of the other summaries because your job really is to make sure you know the ratios go over the learning objectives the curriculum has several examples some of them are short and sweet but there are some examples that are pretty long winded i would say that if you have time go over those examples if you don't have much time just skim the examples and make sure you understand the bottom line points that are being communicated through those examples the practice problems at the end of the reading are very good make sure you do them and also try to practice questions from other sources that is it